Hi, I am Ordinal Mangahas from Cabeo Neve Sia, Philippines. Join us and Cardinal Chito every Sunday on the World Exposed on Jescom TV. Magandang araw, ako po si Patrick Lumtong na Maribelles Bataan. Samahan niyo kami at si Cardinal Chito Tagle tuwing linggo sa The World Exposed sa Jescom TV. Hi, I am Richie Kausaren from Amadeo, Cavite, Philippines. Working here in Surabaya, Indonesia. Join us in Cardinal Chito every Sunday on The World Exposed Jescom TV. Friends, greetings of joy and peace. I trust that you are well. Please continue exposing the word with us every Sunday. Subscribe to JustCom TV, then watch and share the word exposed on your feed. Thank you. Ciao, mabuhay! You are watching The Word Exposed. Let us behold Jesus, the Word Incarnate, revealing Himself to us in the Sunday readings. We are on the 33rd Sunday in Ordinary Time, a week away from the conclusion of the liturgical year. In today's Gospel, Jesus instructs His disciples through the parable of the talents. The Master returns and settles accounts with His servants. Finding that one of them simply buried the master's money in the ground, he orders him to be thrown outside, his talent given to the other with ten talents. For to everyone who has, more will be given, and he will grow rich. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. The master tells his servants. What does this tell us, brothers and sisters? The Lord entrusts us with His gifts and blessings. Do we creatively develop them for God's kingdom? A reading from the book of Proverbs. When one finds a worthy wife, her value is far beyond pearls. Her husband, entrusting his heart to her, has an unfailing prize. She brings him good and not evil all the days of her life. She obtains wool and flax and works with loving hands. She puts her hands to the distaff and her fingers ply the spindle. She reaches out her hands to the poor and extends her arms to the needy. Charm is deceptive and beauty fleeting. The woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her a reward for her labors and let her works praise her at the city gates. The Word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. Concerning times and seasons, brothers and sisters, you have no need for anything to be written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief at night. When people are saying peace and security, then sudden disaster comes upon them, like labor pains upon a pregnant woman and they will not escape. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness for that day to overtake you like a thief. For all of you are children of the light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as the rest do, but let us stay alert and sober. The Word of the Lord. Act wisely and responsibly. You will notice that we are coming to the close of the liturgical year and uh, preparing for the Advent season because our readings are focused on the return of the Master and how we should comport ourselves. In today's readings, I want to highlight the call to act, to act, but with wisdom and with responsibility. The first reading from the book of Proverbs depicts to us an ideal wife. But we can extrapolate and say this is also a description of an ideal person an ideal disciple of God. How is the ideal wife who brings grace and blessing to her husband and family and to the whole city comport herself? She is known for her skills, very ordinary skills of sewing, of being able to weave cloth, a cloth, her hands are skillful with the needle. But her hands are also wise in the sense that it is always, they are always open to help the needy. Her skillful hands at work are also quite skillful in responding to neighbors, brothers and sisters who are neglected. In the book of Proverbs, this is wisdom. Wisdom is shown in skills, but also in the orientation of life. Is your life for others, or is your life only for self-promotion? This ideal wife is blessed because she is wise in the estimation of God. And at the root of her wisdom, her skills, and her acts of charity is the fear of the Lord. We always hear that. The beginning of wisdom is reverence to the Lord. Now, what is her reward? Well, the book of Proverbs tells us that 
Her deeds will never be forgotten. And her deeds must be made known to society, to the city. She will be a blessing not only to her family, but also to her city. Wisdom, responsibility, in action, in daily life, she does it as a wife, as a mother. We don't need to do great, great, great things. In your daily life, act wisely and responsibly. We can see the same theme in the second reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. There is a type of wisdom, a temptation even, to show wisdom by being able to predict when will the Lord come again? When is the second coming of the Lord? When will the end of the world happen? And some people think that they are wise by being able to predict. But no, St. Paul does not buy that. That is not the type of wisdom that he is looking for. He says, well, God knows that. It is not for us to know. What we should be doing is now, today, act as children of the light. You do not belong to darkness. So be wise, light. Be responsible, light. And show it in your action and your life that you are children of the God who brought light and who defeated darkness. My dear brothers and sisters, now, today, in your daily life, in your daily work, be wise, be responsible, and radiate the fear of the Lord. Radiate also the light that the world badly needs today. We only hear of darkness. We hear of gloom. But maybe through our wisdom and responsibility in act, people will see light. The Proclamation of the Holy Gospel According to Matthew Jesus told this parable to his disciples. A man was going on a journey. He called in his servants and handed his funds over to them according to each man's abilities. To one, he dispersed 5,000 silver pieces, to a second, 2,000, and to a third, 1,000. Then he went away. Immediately, the one who received the 5,000 went to invest it and made another five. In the same way, the man who received the two thousand doubled his figure. The man who received the thousand went off instead and dug a hole in the ground where he buried his master's money. After a long absence, the master of those servants came home and settled accounts with them. The man who had received the five thousand came forward bringing the additional five. My Lord, he said, you let me have five thousand. See, I have made five thousand more. His master said to him, Well done. You are an industrious and reliable servant. Since you were dependable in a small matter, I will put you in charge of larger affairs. Come, share your master's joy. The man who had received the two thousand then stepped forward. My Lord, he said, you entrusted me with two thousand, and I have made two thousand more. His master said to him, Cleverly done. You too are an industrious and reliable servant. Since you were dependable in a small matter, I will put you in charge of larger affairs. Come, share your master's joy. Finally, the man who had received the thousand stepped forward. My Lord, he said, I knew you were a hard man, 
You reap where you did not sow and gather where you did not scatter. So out of fear, I went off and buried your thousand silver pieces in the ground. Here is your money back. His master exclaimed, You worthless, lazy lout! You know I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter. All the more reason to deposit my money with the bankers so that on my return, I could have had it back with interest. You there, take the thousand away from him and give it to the man with the ten thousand. Those who have will get more until they grow rich, while those who have not will lose even the little they have. Throw this worthless servant into the darkness outside where he can wail and grind his teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. Act wisely and responsibly. As we prepare for the end of the uh, liturgical year and the beginning of the Advent season, we are being told once again how to prepare ourselves for the coming of the Lord. And today we choose to focus on wisdom and responsibility depicted in the first reading in the uh, figure of the wise, responsible wife who in her daily life exercised wisdom through her skills and through her acts of charity. And the root is the fear of the Lord. She brings honor to her family and to the city. In the second reading, St. Paul reminds the Thessalonians that wisdom is not in being able to guess when the second coming of the Lord will happen, but it is in the daily exercise of your life, your work as children of the light, and not as one propagating darkness and gloom in the world. The Gospel from St. Matthew is the parable of the talents. The master will go away. And he entrusts parts of his property, what is called talents, to three servants according to their abilities. So you see the master, Jesus, respects our uniqueness, respects our capacities. So there is no demand that is beyond what our capacities could accomplish. Very realistic and very, very responsible on the part of the master. But it is interesting that the master did not give instructions to the three servants what they should do with his talents or his properties. He just gave them. One was given five, one was given two, the other was given one. Yeah. The master leaves to the servants the freedom to act. And then we will see who will act wisely and responsibly. The first two, the ones who received five and the other two talents, what did they do? They invested the property of the master. So they took risks. You know, when you invest, you may earn or you may lose. But they took the risk and probably thought that if the master were here, he himself would have invested the money. And so they took the responsibility. If it earns, good. If it does not earn, I take responsibility. Whereas the third, he buried the talent. He preserved it. It will be untouched. It will not grow. It will not also diminish. So it will be preserved. Status quo. And when the uh, master returned, he praised the first two who took risks, who calculated their steps, and eventually 
earned interest for the master's property. And the beautiful words, come, enjoy your master's joy. Come into my joy. Whereas the third servant who preserved, huh? he did not steal. He, he did not even subtract from the riches, but who kept it intact was considered irresponsible for not taking risks. And he was deprived of the joy of the master. Wisdom could be tricky, but it is based on your reading of what the master would have done to his property. And taking that risk based on trust, you act. And if it fails, you answer. If you earn, you also answer. The Lord wants us to act, to act, and not just to be stagnant. This is the best way to prepare for the coming of the Lord. In your work, within your capacity, be wise, take risks, and be responsible. I would like to thank our medical uh, frontliners, our humanitarian servants, who, in spite of dangers to themselves and even to their families, act responsibly, responding to the needs of the victims of the pandemic, the victims of natural disasters, the victims of wars, when they act with responsibility, they know they may even lose their lives, but their loss will be a gain for the kingdom of God. Thanks to them for their example and their inspiration. The word has been exposed. Let us now fulfill it. Many remember St. Aloysius Gonzaga for his chastity. But did you know that he was a frontline volunteer during his time? Born in 1568, Aloysius was set to inherit the Marquisate of Castiglione, Italy. But he did not want to participate in the hedonistic lifestyle prevalent in the European courts where he was reared. It is worth noting that his piety seemed intuitive because he did not have a spiritual guide in the courts of nobility. He fasted thrice a week and refused to light the fire in his bedchamber even in the bitter cold weather. He turned his eyes downcast in the presence of women and his feet were always covered. Written accounts of his life noted that as young as nine years old, Aloysius already observed the custody of the eyes. He even made a vow to never offend God. In 1585, Aloysius decided to renounce his right to the Marquisat. He opted to study for the priesthood as a member of the Society of Jesus in Rome. In the seminary, he had another future saint for spiritual director, the Jesuit theologian Robert Bellarmine. All was well until a plague broke out in Rome in 1591. He was one of the first to respond and volunteer by begging alms for the victims and by caring for the sick, bathing and feeding them. He continued doing so even when most of his brother Jesuits, who like himself were volunteer frontliners, got infected 
and the superior had already instructed them to refrain from serving in the hospital. St. Aloysius Gonzaga was heroically devoted to the victims of the plague. We lift our frontliners today for his protection and intercession. May the Lord bless and deepen their commitment in serving the sick. We also commend to St. Aloysius' prayers the speedy recovery of all people suffering from the coronavirus. May the Lord heal them thoroughly. If St. Aloysius cared much for the sick during the pandemic that he experienced, we know that he also cares for those afflicted by the current pandemic through his prayers to our merciful God. Hi, I am Odinal Mangahas from Cabeo Neve Sia, Philippines. Join us and Cardinal Chito every Sunday on The Word Exposed on Jescom TV. Magandang araw, ako po si Patrick Lumbong na Maribelles Bataan. Samahan niyo kami at si Cardinal Chito Tagle tuwing linggo sa The Word Exposed sa Jescom TV. Hi, I am Richie Kausaren from Amadeo, Cavite, Philippines. Working here in Surabaya, Indonesia. Join us and Cardinal Chito every Sunday on the Word Exposed Jascom TV. Friends, greetings of joy and peace. I trust that you are well. Please continue exposing the Word with us every Sunday. Subscribe to Jascom TV, then watch and share the Word Exposed on your feed. Thank you. We have prepared reflection points for you. Please share them with your companions. The first point is, how can we deepen the spirituality of stewardship? Paano natin mapapalalim ang spiritualidad ng pagiging mabuting katiwala? The second point is, how can we teach the young people to act responsibly? Paano natin matuturuan ang mga kabataan na kumilos ng may responsibilidad? Heavenly Father, You have blessed this humble program with a decade of mission on air. You have gifted it with the talents, hard work, and financial support of many generous people so that as Your Word is exposed, many more may know, love, and serve Jesus. Lord Jesus, be with us always, your production staff and partners, your viewers and benefactors, that we may not run out of courage, zeal, and charity in fulfilling our mission daily. And when our limitations and weaknesses surface, please ask the Father to send the Holy Spirit to purify us and set our hearts on fire with renewed faith, hope, and love, so we may serve you for many more years to come. Amen. Friends, thank you for your company. We pray that the Word of God may find fulfillment in your life and His blessings be always upon you. We hope you could be with us again next Sunday here on the word exposed.